Hey everyone, my name is Rich Walter. I'm the curator for USA, Canada, and Europe here at MIM. I'm standing here in front of our bagpipes display in the Europe Gallery. And the early history of the bagpipes is actually a bit murky. You know, it, it goes back, we believe, up to about 3,000 years ago. There are some references we can interpret from, from texts and other documents and even uh, artwork that there was the existence of something that resembled a bagpipe, uh, though it's, it's hard to know exactly if that's the case, but there are some in interpretations of that. Uh, references in ancient Greek and Roman history that, that there were similar instruments that we would associate with the bagpipe. By about the 13th, 14th century, there are clearer references to bagpipe as musical instruments. And by the 15th century, more and more artistic depictions and, and just historical accounts of people playing by bagpipes of a variety of sorts. So we know it had started to spread as an instrument type by the, certainly the 13th, 14th, 15th centuries. By the 15th century, actually, the bagpipe uh, with roots probably more in the Mediterranean region had moved to Scotland, where it really assumed one of its most iconic forms, the Scottish Great Highland bagpipes, like we have an example here with the full piper's uniform. Uh, but that's by no means the only version of the bagpipe, nor is it the, the original version of the bagpipe, though certainly an iconic uh, staple of bagpipe music and recognized around the world. So what I wanted to do was just call a bit of attention. It's nice always to have uh, an assortment of instruments of any given type in one spot in the museum because you can do some really nice comparison and contrasts. And it's always important for us to think that people can take a close look at the instruments on display and, and ideally learn something about how they work, how they produce their sound. At its core, a bagpipe is a reed pipe instrument. So if you think of something like an oboe or its precursor, the sham, it's a, a reed instrument. These reed pipes uh, that you're seeing in the video right now don't have bags attached to them, but they sort of show the melody component of a bagpipe where there are finger holes and depending on uh, how you place your fingers over those holes you can play a variety of melody notes. Of course the characteristic feature of any bagpipe is that it's attached to a bag and so that bag supplies the air through the reed pipe rather than blowing through it like a, a oboe or a clarinet. You pump air from a bag through that reed pipe chanter melody instrument. The bag can be inflated frequently also with, uh, with breath, so you blow into the bag. But also there are examples, let's say from Ireland and Poland, where you use a bellows. You use your arms to pump a bellows that sort of mechanically inflates that bag. And then when you see the bag is attached. In this case, here's the, the melody pipe, that chanter reed pipe, but it also has this long drone pipe, and that's another common feature of bagpipes. Not universal. There are bagpipes that don't have drone pipes, but many of them have one or more drone pipes, and so once you've inflated the bag with breath or a bellows, you can squeeze that air out of the bag and it goes through a melody component called the chanter in this case, uh, or in some cases we call it a chanter, and a drone pipe, which is a constant single note. It doesn't change, you don't play that note. It's just sounding the whole time you're supplying air through it. So it's a combination of a melody that you can play with your fingers and frequently a set of droning notes uh, going through those longer, drone pipes. And you can see that that configuration, those basic elements are present on all these instruments, but the drone pipes are shorter or longer. The, the melody pipes can either be single or in some cases double melody chanters. So there's a, a 
wide variety of how these can be displayed. And that's what you really see in other parts of the world. So it's not isolated to one part of the world. You can discover this music and these instruments in certainly Scotland and the UK, but also Croatia and Poland and Turkey and Italy. And so it's, it's really a, a widespread tradition. Uh, when we see some of these other varieties, again, you see here there's a way to inflate the bag. You squeeze that air, it's a combination of coming through a melody reed pipe that you play with your fingers and a short drone pipe. Looking back at these Highland bagpipes, you can actually see now we've got a way to inflate the bag, a melody pipe here you play with your fingers and a set of three drone pipes and if you look carefully there's actually uh, a way to slide these drone pipes to make them shorter or longer that helps tune the drone pitches to a, a kind of a fine-tuned pitch to make it play in tune with itself and the way the player wants and so there's a, a great degree of flexibility in how they're made but they all have that combination of a mechanism to inflate the bag either from breath or from a bellows, a bag that is then filled with air that can be squeezed out and through a combination of a melody pipe and normally one or more drone pipes. So just again wanted to spend a little bit of time. We love it when people come to MIM to learn how musical instruments work. We love having them kind of uh, arranged in uh, specific thematic display to get a good comparison and contrast of the diversity of types that exist around the world. But then of course we especially love when you have time to explore the museum and actually discover these instruments in their native countries, in their native traditions, so you can really see the types of bagpipe instrument that might be played in Slovakia or might be played in Spain and, and see that these are thriving musical instruments around the world still today with ancient roots. Uh, so that's just a little glimpse of our bagpipe collection. You can find them here in the bagpipes display, but especially you can find them exploring MIM on your next visit. Thank you.